everyone. Welcome to my kitchen. I am KJ of Joyful Life with KJ. I am a Trim Healthy Mama certified coach and a certified nutrition coach and soon to be certified food addiction coach. Um, I'm going to help you today make your own low carb wraps. I have been on a journey with no gluten, no eggs, and no dairy. Um, and very, very few grains. As I work through some health issues, I have a um, case of gut candida that requires a little bit of a special diet for now, at least temporarily as I kill off the candida. So one thing that I enjoy a lot is uh, bread. Who don't? If you don't like bread, who are you? I don't eat a lot of sprouted bread anymore. At one point in my journey, I ate a lot of healthy whole, sprouted whole wheat bread, um, but I found that that can be easily overdone. It's not the bread's fault, um, and it's not the toaster's fault, but it's KJ's fault. I can easily overdo bread. So I would have low-carb wraps in place of that. And I would often take the low carb wraps um, with me. I called it my emergency purse tortilla and I carried it with me so that wherever I was, if my family wanted to go out to eat at Chick-fil-A or whatever they, they needed, they wanted takeout or drive through, I would pull up my emergency car, car tortilla, purse tortilla, whatever you want to call it. And I would order grilled chicken with cheese and bacon and mayo and all the yummy stuff. And I'd slap it in this tortilla with some veggies. And now I had what felt like bread instead of just always having a bunless burger. Well, since I am now gluten-free, that's even more difficult. And gluten-free wraps, when you look at the ingredients, are usually full of things like tapioca starch and rice flour and things that are not so great for your blood sugar um, and certainly not great for your waistline. So I need to make my own tortillas. I need to have my own low-carb tortilla. So I'm going to make some today using lupin flour as one of the ingredients. And I just spilled my arrowroot powder all over my counter because the bag won't close and I just spilled it all over my phone. So there. If you've ever wondered if being a mess in the kitchen is normal, I'm here to tell you, yes, it is. Or at least it's my normal. All right. Lupin Flour. This is the brand that I use. There are lots of brands available. I use Anthony's from Amazon. I'll leave a link at the top where you can get this. Um, I am just learning how to use Lupin Flour. It kind of has a... It's got a, a smell, but I can never... It's kind of sweet smelling. Kind of... I don't know. It reminds me a little bit of peas. Maybe chickpeas or peas. Maybe. I don't know. Basically, lupin flour comes from sweet lupini beans, which are a legume. They're kind of like uh, peanuts. Um, they uh, Soybeans is another good comparison to the type of legume that they are. I found it interesting on the back. It says, found in Egyptian tombs, lupin beans have been consumed for centuries. Not only were pharaohs powerful, but they were on low-carb diets as well. Who knew? Who knew that the pharaoh was gluten-free? All right. So this is a little drier than normal flour. Soaks up a lot more water. Um, it's got a distinct flavor, but not a bad flavor. It kind of tastes a little bit like corn-ish. I mean, it has its own flavor. It's not bad. I really, I'm learning to cook with it. It's a different flour. It's not as dry as coconut flour. It's not as wet as almond flour. It's, it's different and it takes some practice. So we're going to try to make low carb tortillas here today because KJ needs her emergency pur purse tortilla. So I'm going to start with a third a cup of lupin flour. And I'm going to use a half a, calm down, a, half a cup of um, 
Trim Healthy Mama Baking Blend. You could use almond flour as well. I may need to add a little extra liquid to mine than you would if you used almond flour, but I'm trying to avoid um, too many nuts, and I don't want this to be super duper high fat. I'd like this to say low fat and low carb together, not just low carb. Um, the exciting thing about lupin flour is there's only one net carb. There's 10 grams of fiber in a serving of lupin flour. That's some fiber. So if you need some fiber, go for it. All right. Two tablespoons of arrowroot powder. Arrowroot powder is high in carbs, but two tablespoons spread among all of these will keep it still low. You could also try xanthan gum. My dog decides now to bark. Sebastian, you don't bark ever. And then you, I get on the phone and you bark. All right, baking blend, arrowroot powder, lupin flour, and we're gonna do a half teaspoon of salt to that as well. All right, and the only other thing we're gonna add now is our water. We're gonna do six tablespoons of water. This should make six good size tortillas, I think, um, or four kind of mini. I just said that wrong. Six mini or four kind of big tortillas. Start with six tablespoons of water. Try to form it into a dough. You don't want your dough to be so sticky wet that you can't work it at all. So if you work your six tablespoons in and it's still dry and crumbly like this, add more. But take your time. Don't add too much because you don't want them to be super sticky. You want a nice dough, but not so sticky that you can't spread it out. It doesn't need to be wet like pancake dough. It needs to be more firm like actual dough. I think I'm going to add another maybe two tablespoons total. It depends on where you live, how dry your flour is. You could use the same amount of flour or liquid as me and get a completely different result. So just take your time with the flour, but you'll likely need at least six tablespoons. So all right, now I have a nice dough that's not sticking to my hands very much and it's not sticking to the bowl, but it is sticking to itself. So I should have a nice dough, nice yellow. They're gonna kind of look like corn tortillas because of their color. So once you have your ball, we're just gonna cut that into fourths because I'm gonna make four larger tortillas. These aren't going to be huge tortillas, but they're going to be a decent size. them into nice balls equal size and like I said you can do six mini like the little mini tortillas like street taco tortillas if you want you can try to make them bigger I don't know if it'll work so this is a tortilla press you get some parchment okay well I'm out of parchment because what makes a better video than not having the items that you need to make it. So instead, I'm going to try wax paper. But ideally, you should use parchment. Maybe wax paper will work just as well. I don't know, I've never tried it with wax paper. As a matter of fact, I've never made tortillas with this press. I've only ever rolled them out. So this is a test run for KJ anyway. I'm doing this wrong. I flipped it. It's upside down. <laughs> We're learning together, my friends. We're learning together. There we go. These are not super large. That one did. I did just break one. Naturally, I broke it. Looks good, though. Looks good. I think that... I could make these a little larger. So I'm gonna, for now, I'm gonna set these aside. And then we're, that one's broken, naturally. I broke the first one. It's a test run, okay? 
Where's my parchment? I don't have any. Where's my what? All right. Should we try? Let's see. Let's see. Let's just try the same thing again. See what our outcome is. They came out. They're coming out so beautiful. Look at them. I can't wait to taste these. Okay, so we're going to heat our pan up to kind of a high heat. Get it good and hot. And then we're just going to cook these for a couple minutes on each side. They look like corn tortillas, don't they? They look exactly like corn tortillas. I'm excited to try these. I think I will have mine with, I have some, um, I have some bean puree in the fridge and some pineapple. I think I'll have, make them into a spicy pineapple type taco, which I've done before and is very, very good and very filling and keeps me satisfied for a long time. And these will as well, these do have, um, this batch, this whole batch has 12 grams of protein just in the tortillas. So if you ate all four of these tortillas, they would be a fuel pull with 12 grams of protein. You just want to keep your filling. If you're eating the whole batch, you're going to want to keep, if you're having an S meal on Trim Healthy Mama, which is healthy fats, then you're going to want to keep your um, additional carbs to your meal low because there's enough carbs in this to, to be at the max level for um, your S meal. If you're having an E meal, I wouldn't add a lot of extra fat because these have a little fat in them already. So just have these with whatever, which is what I'm going to do and have no added fat with mine. Let's get an appropriate spatula, KJ. Now I didn't spray the pan and I don't know that I need to, but we can try that as well. It's not going to stick, at least not to a good nonstick pan but I don't know if we're going to need to spray it to get like a nice brown on the outside. I'll spray the next one and see the difference in how they come out. They don't take long to cook. A couple minutes on each side. They feel like they're going to be a really good texture. I'm excited. I hope they hold together well, stay pliable. If they don't, stay super pliable. I may try replacing the flour, the, sorry, the arrowroot powder with xanthan gum and see what happens. Because xanthan gum can remain pliable as well. But arrowroot may be good. Yeah, she's hot. So let's let it cool a little before I get too excited. Now let's try one with spray and see how it comes out. and how it cooks. It's nice and warm. Um, I'm anxious to see if it's going to remain pliable or if it's going to break on me. I really am start. I'm wondering if arrow or uh, xanthan gum would be a better choice. because I want something that's going to remain pliable in my fridge so that I can make up a large batch of these and put them in my fridge. Another great way these would be, these would be really good is once they're cooked and they're cooled to add some fat to your pan and fry these up. Ooh, that got nice and golden brown with the, with the um, spray on it. Um, fry these up in some fat and a little fat, get them nice and crispy, put them on your pan, fry up, uh, put some, whatever you want. You can put some fat-free, um, a small amount. What is going on with my hand? 
Okay, this is interesting. Wow. That's cool videography. Okay, friends. So here's what I'm finding. They are cracking a little with the arrowroot. So let's go. They're still good. I just tasted one and they're delightful. Let's go ahead and try a batch with um, xanthan gum instead. And I think we'll try to make them a little larger this time as well. So let's go again with a half a cup of Trim Healthy Mama baking blend. I also think I'm going to add just a touch of sweetener. I got just about a half cup of baking blend left. Like I need to go downstairs and get more baking blend. Um, a third of a cup, third of a cup of lupin flour. <clears throat> Let's do xanthan gum this time instead. Okay, because the arrowroot is um, stronger than xanthan, we want half the amount of xanthan as we do arrowroot. So I'm going to do one tablespoon of xanthan gum. So I've got half cup of Trim Healthy Mama baking blend. I've got one tablespoon of xanthan gum. I have one third of a cup of lupin flour and now I need to add salt. And I think, like I said, I think I'm gonna add just a touch of sweetener to this recipe. I'd say this would be optional. Just a touch, like maybe a quarter of a teaspoon. Just enough. I think this would be fantastic with garlic. Um, basil would be good in here, onion powder. I'm avoiding onion and garlic temporarily as part of my elimination diet, so I won't be adding that today, but you absolutely could. So six tablespoons of water to start, and then we'll add more if needed. And I can definitely tell more is going to be needed. <laughs> I stirred this with an actual spoon to start and not a measuring spoon. No, I might have enough water here. Because like I said, oh, yeah, I think I do. I don't want it too sticky. I just want to work it together into a dough. I want it to stick together, but I don't want it sticking to me. So that's a good dough. Not super sticky to me, not not probably won't stick to the tortilla thing as much because it's a good dry dough but not dry as in crumbly. So let's make them bigger this time now that we're using xanthan gum to see how they come out. Get my tortilla press. Where did I put it? I put it right there. I want to make sure this is a consistent dough with not lots of, see how it's separated here? I want to make sure it's consistent dough because when I put that into my tortilla press, if it's got those cracks, then the edges of my tortilla are going to be inconsistent. So, all right. Let's see what happens. This is double the size of the last ones. Didn't quite make double, but it is a lot bigger than the last ones. All right, this dough is stickier with the xanthan gum than it is with the arrowroot powder, which could be a good thing because that could mean that it is going to um, be more pliable, which is what I want. I want pliability. I want it to remain nice and soft so I can have this, make a nice sandwich out of this wrap. It's hearty too. This tortilla maker presses them relatively thick. It doesn't take long to heat that pan back up.
All right. Just let that go. See what we get. Again, add whatever seasonings you want to this. If you want onion powder, oregano, basil, cumin, whatever you want. It's your tortilla. Do what you want. I don't care. I'm keeping mine just basic for now for this attempt. All right, without the arrowroot powder, these are even lower carb because xanthan gum has lower carbs. Xanthan gum, I take it back, has the exact amount of carbs. Never mind. Don't listen to what I have to say. I'm not right most of the time. Kidding. Oops, so that's in the center here. There, I pressed harder on that one. That one got even bigger and thinner. So apparently, depending on how hard you press. Now my um, wax paper is getting a little coated and stuff and I probably should have replaced it with a new piece because as they get coated they get more and more sticky so I think well I was gonna take that apart and re-flatten it but it came off okay Ooh, I like the bubble effect this one is giving me with the xanthan gum versus the arrowroot. This is fluffing up more than the arrowroot powder did, which I find interesting. I'm no food scientist, so don't ask me why. Couldn't tell you. I'll do it new. This is more thick. This one, I don't think I either didn't squeeze it enough or the xanthan gum is making it super fluffy and giving it more of a pita texture, which I'm not opposed to um, because honestly, I like hearty. Girl likes to eat. This is more like a, whew, it's like a flatbread. See how thick that is? Just go ahead and try a bite. Mm -hmm. That sweetener played a big role. I really like the addition of the sweetener very much. That is fantastic for a gluten-free grain-free, egg-free, flatbread, dairy-free. That is good. Oh, it's so good while it's warm. That would be good with peanut butter and jelly on it. I can't eat peanut butter right now. Dog heard me say peanut butter and came running. Did I hear peanut butter? There's a piece on the floor I already dropped that you won't eat. Okay, so now I'm going to make just a little filling to go in my what we're now calling flatbreads because they're more like flatbreads. Now, I'm not going to add any fat to this because there's plenty of fat in my, um, in my meal. I don't need any extra fat. I've already got a little bit of fat from the cooking spray. There's a small amount of fat, three grams or so from the lupin flour. So I'm not going to bother adding any, but I need some moisture when I cook this or it's going to be drier than a popcorn fart. Chicken broth is my go-to added fat for sauteing anything. Does it work the same as fat? No, it's not fat, but it works great. I'm gonna throw in a bunch of jalapenos to that. That chicken broth, all that's really doing is helping my chicken warm through without, without singeing on the pan since there's no fat. Because if I added just a little cooking spray, by the time that the chicken was warmed all the way through, it would be burning 
onto the pan without anything, any liquid or any fat in there. So I'm going to add to that a little bit of pineapple. First, I have to give the dog a piece because he's waiting patiently. So I'm gonna add a little pineapple. Chicken, pineapple, and jalapenos. And then I'm gonna add some seasonings. Now, if you are not avoiding certain things like I am, go ahead and add lots of garlic and lots of onion powder to this. It's gonna be delicious. I'm going to add some paprika because I add paprika to everything whether it needs it or not why I don't know because for me even this doesn't even have a lot of flavor to me but for me it's important that my food looks well seasoned <laughs> if it looks bland and pale I ain't eating it. it looks too boring so I'm gonna add cumin a decent amount of cumin garlic would be my go-to here but temporarily, there's no garlic in the picture for KJ. That's okay. I'll be all right. All right. The one last thing I'm going to add to that is a little bit of brown swerve. This is optional. Just a bit. Just to kind of help caramelize the pineapple. It's going to be really good. This is black bean puree that I had left over from last night's dinner. Black bean puree is a can of black beans rinsed and drained. Add your favorite seasonings. To mine, all I did was cumin and cayenne. And a little bit of water and some salt and pepper. And puree it with like a ninja chopper until you have a nice consistency. It'll be absolutely delicious. All right, we're gonna call these flatbreads. Yes, this one's missing a piece because I took a bite. It's all right. But they're thicker than the normal tortilla because when the xanthan gum made them puff up some. But look, they're nice and sturdy, hearty and healthy. Gluten-free, low carb, low fat. These, this, so this meal, because there's very little added fat, but there's lots of healthy carbs from the beans and the pineapple and the, um, yeah, beans and pineapple. This is going to be a lovely E meal. I love black bean puree, you guys. It's so good. So good. Some of my spicy pineapple chicken filling on top of each one. Here you could add a little Greek yogurt or you could add um, sour cream if that's what you chose. If it was regular sour cream and you're a trim healthy mama, it would be considered a crossover. So I would go with Greek yogurt, but since I am dairy free, I'm going to go with a little sour cream that I made from silken tofu. It's just basically silken tofu, lemon juice, and salt. Just to give it a a little bit of a cooling, like, these are so good looking, I don't know what to do. Let's go ahead and try one. All right, you ready? It's a big old mutt. Look at that. Look at that. That is a hearty meal right there. Mm. That's good. Mm. That flatbread is perfect. It's not overpowering in flavor. It's just a vehicle and it's a gluten-free healthy vehicle. And look at how nicely it holds together. This is good job. If you need to be dairy-free, egg-free, gluten-free, grain-free, all the free, go ahead and make these. I think you'll really like them. They're super, you saw how easy they were to make if you make them right. Mm-hmm. That's good. All right, we're playing around a little bit. Here's what I got. This is half the dough right here to make one large, thick flatbread. This can be used for a sandwich. This can be used to make a little pizza. This can just be pile your toppings on top, however you wanna do it. It's soft, it's pliable, it's delicious. Mini taco, 
size. This is one quarter of the dough that you could make street taco size out of. And then this is a larger one, still very pliable, nice tortilla um, consistency that you can use to make like a wrap. Um, I rolled this dough. Now this is a quarter of the dough rolled out with a rolling pin. If I did half the dough rolled out with a rolling pin, it would be much larger and very thin and make a perfect wrap. Right now it's slightly small. Right now it would make a small wrap. You could have two of them like this, or you could make a much larger wrap, which is probably what I'm going to do and have my emergency purse tortilla. So there you go. Okay, so I calculated the actual nutrition of these tortillas. So the entire batch, which would be these, let's see, this is half, half. half. So this, whole, if I were to eat all of these right now, which I'm not going to, because this is, they're pretty hearty. This is pretty dense and hearty. I don't think you'd want more than one, maybe for dinner, but they're pretty hearty. So the entire batch has 15 grams of protein. It has three grams of fat and 10, I'm sorry, three grams of carbs and 10 grams of fat. So these are, um, if they're, they're a fuel pull, if you eat, even if you eat the entire batch, if you have no other added fat, okay, to your meal, if you, you can absolutely have them with an S, they're super low carb. And if you want to have them with an E, just stick to half the batch. Keep them at half the batch for your E. So this for your E or this for your E. Okay. Thanks for joining me. Please hit the like and subscribe button. I really appreciate your support and come back next time for more cooking with KJ. Have a great day.